Ryan Hicks, and uh, I'm going to start this as day one, officially, of a vlog uh, of my new album, album number four. It's April 8th, 2021, and I'm here uh, in my studio, which is actually in the basement of my home. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say this is the first official day of my new album. Um, it's not like I said, well, I'm going to start an album today. Uh, actually, it kind of is in some ways. Uh, but I've been working on new material um, constantly since um, I haven't ne never really stopped writing. But I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a story of the process and the journey. Um, why I'm doing this is for a couple of reasons. I think first and foremost is to keep myself accountable because every time you know I start to put my foot on the gas for it, um, I take it off for whatever reason. And uh, I thought sharing this uh, story is making me accountable to make sure that I uh, continue it. Uh, also, uh, I get questions all the time on how do you write songs? <laughs> and I don't say that as a demeaning thing to people that ask the question, but uh, a lot of people, I think, think it's some magic answer that, you know, I uh, put on some cool lights or I, you know, have a certain cup of, you know, herbal tea and uh, writing in an expensive journal with a fountain pen and all of a sudden that songs come out. And uh, sometimes, I guess that is, and for some people uh, that might work great, but oftentimes um, it comes from crap. <laughs> it comes from, uh, you know, a messy studio or a disorganized thing or, um, you know, for me, a lot of times I get ideas in the strangest places like washing dishes or walking my dog. And I find those creative for me just because I'm turning my brain off, it seems, from trying to force it and just, you know, letting ideas flow. And that's really what's all about. So um, this vlog that I want to start today um, shows you that process that, uh, you know, there's magic to it. I'm not dismissing that. I'm not saying that there isn't. Uh, but oftentimes it's really hard work. And I thought it'd be interesting um, to go through uh, with you the whole process. My last album, Dream, came out in 2019, and there was some new material on that. Uh, but part of the reason that I wanted to do that album is uh, my first album, Prairie Ocean, I love. But uh, it was a learning process for me. Um, I felt I grew tremendously, uh, but when I started it, I really wasn't ready. The songs weren't ready, I wasn't ready to get into the recording studio. And uh, I show myself a lot of forgiveness because it was my first time doing it. And, you know, I, you know, commend myself for taking that step and putting my toe in the water and doing it. And I'm very proud of it. When I listen back to it, I think it's great. Uh, but I wanted a chance to kind of revisit that stuff. And so with my 2019 album, uh, Dream, it was mostly uh, songs that I pre-recorded or songs, you know, from the Prairie Ocean album with some new songs like the song Dream uh, done up. So the last time I had an album of all brand new original material was Pulsing Colors and that was in 2017 which was four years ago now and um, you know material that I have now some of the songs that I'm working on uh, and recording like the one I did today date back that far um, you know sometimes I can write a song really quickly and sometimes it takes a long time and that's what I think is interesting is this process of uh, you know, how we record songs and how we write songs. And uh, so, yeah, some of these songs have um, been around for a while. And um, I'm a big believer in what I'll call the incubation period, that they're ready when they're ready. My process is never the same. I never sit down and do it the same way. Uh, certainly, my process has changed. And something that I focus on a lot are the lyrics. So the music seems to come fairly easy to me, but uh, I really struggle with lyrics, or I used to struggle with lyrics still struggle with lyrics um, but it's gotten a little easier through the years because I have a process so uh, you know I've taken some online courses read a lot of books on it and there's no easy formula for it uh, but certainly I feel like I have a better sense of how to tell a story and uh, that for me is really what I try and do with my songs is I'm, I consider myself a storyteller so whether it's through my music or whether it's through uh, film and video which I love doing I do a lot of my own music videos 
and my, all of my, my social content, as we're doing here, um, it's just an extension of that. It's a way for me to tell a story. So whether it's an Instagram post or a music video or a brand new song, I'm trying to tell a story. It's not necessarily my story, but it's a story that I'm trying to tell. So anyways, um, some of these songs have been around for a long time. Some of them uh, I've just written in the last uh, couple months. Um, you know, my process is messy. Uh, I have tons and tons, this isn't even like a third of them, of journals, of books, and I label them and go through them. Um, just because when I'm starting from nothing, I love to, to write in a journal. And uh, oftentimes it's not trying to write a song, it's just writing. Jason Bloom, who's a fantastic songwriter, <laughs> calls these future hits, right? Like, so these are like ideas, sketches of ideas that, you know, hopefully will become uh, full of songs, you know, that whole incubation period. Um, so going back to that question, how do you write songs? So that's kind of how I write songs, you know, like a lot of them sit around for a while. Some of them, uh, you know, come very quickly. Some of them don't. Um, but when I write songs, I'm very intentional about it. And um, I write songs, but also I think bigger than that is I write albums. So, uh, you know, I'm approaching album number four today. So uh, the songs, uh, even though they're different songs and they're intentionally different, there's got to be something that brings them together, like peas in a pod, right? Uh, so that's what I'm working through. I don't have that clear vision of what it is, but I really have a sense of it. Um, we've obviously gone through so much in this last year with COVID and um, a lot of my friends or people that know me said, you must have loved this because you have, you know, all this time now, you know, you don't have to play shows, you don't have to do this. Uh, I'm a teacher as well. So um, last spring was at home working, but I had a lot of time, um, you know, if I wanted to come down here. And the thing about being creative is, for me at least, I need to be inspired and I need to feel comfortable and relaxed and safe. And I don't know about you, but I haven't really felt comfortable, relaxed or safe for a long time, including now. Um, but again, just moving forward, uh, I, like for me, I think it's a, a, a form of bravery to get started, you know, because you could always be waiting for that perfect time. And uh, I have a sense of urgency in, this, in the sense that I really feel this momentum at my back now, and I want to, um, you know, bring these stories to life. So, um, it's been hard. Last year has been hard. Uh, I love playing live. And so often when I play live, I get that energy back from the crowd. So whether it's doing a live uh, solo show where it's just me, where I usually play in a club or a bar, uh, playing my songs, sometimes playing cover songs. I love that. Being on stage, I've played in a couple bands, Squeeze of Scotch, which is a fairly traditional Celtic band, and Sundog, which is a cover band. Uh, and then also Ryan Hicks Band, which is playing my stuff live. Uh, I love playing on stage with musicians and that camaraderie from the players, that energy. Uh, to not have that, I really, really miss that. And I can't, you know, hopefully wait to get back to that again. Um, so this past year has been tough. You know, you think you have all this free time to, uh, to write. Uh, and I have. But I wouldn't say that I've been inspired just because of the uh, circumstances. But... For whatever reason, in the last month, um, I really have, and so this is why I'm going forward with this. Uh, something that I've intentionally done uh, this past winter is usually winter in any year is tough for me uh, just because I'm uh, an outside person and um, I gravitate to the sun and the warmth. And, uh, you know, we might have a lot of sun, but not a lot of warmth in the winter. And uh, it's always, you know, mentally been really hard and I guess physically because I haven't moved much whereas this year I really made it a priority to get outside move be active and it was fantastic I didn't ski or skate or anything like that but lots of walks lots of time with my dog or time with my family outside and um, found it really really rejuvenating uh, something that I've been doing all year as well because I'm a teacher is uh, any lunch hour or lunch our lunch hour is 45 minutes but any lunch 40 minutes that I have five minutes to like scarf down some food and then um, have lunch. Um, I go outside for a walk and uh, I'm a teacher at St. Kateri School in Regina and it's in Harbor Landing which is a new area and there's a beautiful walking trail behind the school so that's usually uh, where I go. And so this winter was good in terms of I got outside lots. 
uh, had a great time. Uh, it was also really good because the group that I work with, Songs for Nature, we were able to have an online winter camp. And uh, I found that great. And again, just making that priority to be outside is something that was great for me and I really enjoyed it. Uh, speaking of Songs for Nature, I think something that really kind of pushed me into um, getting back into recording is I was working on a song for Songs for Nature. Uh, last summer we had a virtual uh, songwriting camp. Normally we would have these songwriting camps in person at a beautiful place, usually at Last Mountain Lake Bird Sanctuary. And of course, because of COVID, we weren't able to do that. And uh, there was a group song that I kind of led um, when I say group song that I kind of led, I led it, but it wasn't traditional, like we're all sitting in the same room writing a song. It was, you know, getting ideas from people and them contributing. But it's a really cool way to do it. And I was working on that song since last summer and really, um, you know, was able to go forward for that. We were able to get some funding, kind of end of the year budget stuff. And so I was able to, uh, to revisit it. And uh, I'm glad I did because it was something that I was never really happy with because I never felt it was finished. Uh, ended up being like a 15 minute soundscape and I knew you know it needed work and so in the end it was five minute really you know I think it's a beautiful really epic song and I can't wait to uh, share that but that process of working with it working with musicians remotely really kind of pushed me into where I am now so these songs that I'm uh, working on um, they've been around for a while. Um, I was really fortunate a few years ago in 2019 to get a grant from the Saskatchewan Arts Board t for a writing grant. So I spent six months working on material, working on songs, and a lot of these songs that I'm doing now started from that. Um, they were put on the shelf a long time because, you know, like I said, the last year has been really tough. Uh, so... What I love about this now is I'm coming at it with such a passion and such a urgency um, in terms of I really want to tell this story and I want to tell it now and I really feel inspired. Um, and so it's a perfect opportunity to do it. So um, I want you to be a part of this. I want you to be a part of the journey. Uh, today I was working on a song called Look Up and Live that for, for me it's origins um, go back to, I think, 2016 in uh, Banff, Alberta when I started it. Um, and that title uh, comes from one of my favorite people ever, Catherine Lorne, who is my choral director. When I was in choir at the University of Regina, the Chamber Singers, um, you know, we would be in choir and we would have our music and be looking down like this. And she would often say, choir, look up and live. And what she meant by that is in those contexts, she's, you know, cueing us, she's giving us the lyrics, she's giving us everything, and she's a fantastic uh, conductor, so she really would. If you just make eye contact with her and with each other, you know, that is a great way to make music. And so it sounds a little cliche, but I think that's also great advice in life, is to look up and live. And so... That's the inspiration with the song. That's what I'm working on. It's gone through so many different versions, and uh, it's working on it hard today, and I'm really happy with how it is. Um, I want to also, with this album, um, you know, a lot of my music has been called retro because I have a lot of influences from, like, you know, the Beach Boys and Beatles, Paul McCartney specifically. And uh, part of this album is I want to have something more contemporary, but at the same time, I really want to embrace those things, not to rip off Brian Wilson or rip off Paul McCartney, but to um, to not also put my foot on the brakes on those too. That's a part of who I am and part of my music, and so that's really going to come through um, with this. So I'm going to sign off for now. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them, and I'll try and address them in uh, future things. But the... Um, the reason that I'm doing this is because I keep getting this question, how do you write songs? And I want to go through the process and show you um, it's not the same for me. And what works for me might not work for you. Uh, I'd like to kind of show you some ways that I do it just to, to uh, show you, give you some ideas. And uh, we can go from there. But certainly for this song, I was inspired by that title, Look Up and Live, right? So we'll sign off for now and we'll uh, check back soon should also mention too i've had a beard for so long um i kind of felt like starting this album was like a clean slate and so i want to have a clean slate too so um decided so needed to change and um kind of embracing that and yeah i think it's been like um 
pretty much over 10 years since I kind of really didn't have a beard. I've had it for so long. Um, yeah, so that's new too.